everybody I have a video here for you today and this is by request and this has really been bugging me the last couple nights when I've been looking at this because you really never know what you're gonna find on my Egypt impact catastrophe video from a few weeks ago I had a really good comment and here's the comment from Horizon DX what is your opinion of the large circular formation just south of Lapine Oregon and it is just northeast of Crater Lake and I had never looked into a large circular formation in that area of the world. Let's just zoom into the formation that he's talking about here. And when I first looked at this, I thought, well, geez, that certainly looks like a large impact crater, but there are other possibilities. And here is Crater Lake right here. But just in the mind's eye, that looks like an impact crater, but this is not on any list, so I thought, hmm, this and any probable impact leaving a crater that big would have been just truly devastating to the, to North America, literally. But what really caught my eye when I started looking around, because there are calderas and there are other things that can produce circular formations in the Earth. But calderas are rarely perfectly circle as far as very large ones. But then I started looking around and I found this. Now here is Atlas Obscura, and I've used them before, and they actually have a story about this formation in Central Oregon, and I was very happy to find this. And the first thing I notice is large boulders and what actually went on here and formed this. Well, very good evidence says that this is a volcanic formation. This is actually larger than Meteorite Crater in Arizona. And when I first looked at this, I was thinking, hmm, is this a splashdown, secondary splashdown crater? What exactly formed this? It says the exact origin of the mile wide crater in the Fort Rock Basin of Lake County, Central Oregon is a mystery. Thought to be of volcanic origin rather than the result of an ancient meteor impact, it is somewhere between 13,000 and 100,000 years old. That date. The early date of 13,000 years old, that kind of got my attention. That's kind of like the date window of the Greenland crater also. It says, the ancient blast left a rim that reaches heights of 100 to 210 feet above the ground level and an interior basin nearly 500 feet below it. It is thought that the crater is a mar, a depression that occurs when water reacts explosively with volcanic magma, often forming crater lakes seen elsewhere, particularly in Alaska. In this case, the ancient lake bed dried up, leaving only the hole. The area around Fort Rock Basin has a legacy of volcanic activity, leaving caches of obsidian and cinder cones along with old lava flows and caves. The desolate landscape is so alien that astronauts were brought here to the crater for training in the 1960s. So I thought that was very interesting. But also in the area, this is near Silver Lake, Oregon, not too far away from that anomaly we looked at on Google Earth, is a crack in the ground here, a volcanic fissure over two miles long and up to 70 feet deep. And it says, the eruptions from the four craters lava field, four pyroclastic cone volcanoes formed during the Pleistocene or early Holocene, or early Holocene, they're not really sure created a sinking of older, heavier rock forming a shallow depression about three kilometers wide, extending southward into an old lake basin. And here you see what they just call a crack in the ground, volcanic fissures, mar craters. I have read where those are the result sometimes of impacts on Earth from things from space because the rock gets fractured when stuff hits the Earth. Liquids have a place to go when the earth is fractured and sometimes the molten lava meets up with groundwater or the bottom of a lake and massive explosions are caused. And here on Google Earth is two mile crack in the ground and I'll show you where this goes up to. It goes up to this area right around here, but this is in the area of an ancient lake maybe a little bit still left of it here today. But here is a proximity to whatever anomaly this is. So I got to thinking here, we maybe have some Mar craters going off and cracks in the ground being formed. Could this have possibly happened as a result of an impact 
during the Younger Dryas at this time period. And this would have certainly sent debris, flaming, molten debris, all over the North American ice cap. Now I found a topography map, so I wanted to check this. And here you can see I line these two up pretty close. And that anomaly, there does appear to be somewhat of a bowl-shaped structure right on Google Earth where this anomaly appears. So is this an ancient impact crater? Well, I can't say for sure it is, but I can't rule it out either. Now here's a look at Crater Lake, and I just thought I would look into the history of this place since it's really right next door to this anomaly on Google Earth. And I was fairly familiar with Crater Lake. My grandfather's brother lived in Klamath Falls, Oregon, so I remember seeing pics of this place when they vacationed there. I always assumed this was a very ancient lake, maybe 50, 100,000 years old, but I had no clue. So I thought I would look into how old exactly this lake was, and what I have found really surprised me. Now here is a diagram of the lake, and there is what they call the Merriam Cone and Wizard Island here. But this was a gigantic volcanic event that happened only in 5700 BC, only 7,700 years ago. A 12,000 foot mountain just collapsed and formed Crater Lake. But I'm sure the explosion of this mountain in 5700 BC had a devastating effect. I guess this blew debris all the way up to Canada, over to Wyoming, south into Nevada. This would have been devastating to the northwestern part of the ancient United States, for sure. Now, since Crater Lake blew just 7,700 years ago, were there humans around that witnessed this event? Well, there certainly was. This is called the Fort Rock Sandals, and I will leave the link below. It says, Fort Rock Sandals are a distinctive type of ancient fiber footwear found in southeast Oregon and northern Nevada named by archaeologist Luther Cressman, who first found examples in Oregon's Fort Rock Cave. Fort Rock sandals are the oldest directly dated footwear in the world. In 1938, anthropologist Luther Cressman from the University of Oregon recovered dozens of sandals and fragments of sandals from Fort Rock Cave. They were found beneath a layer of volcanic ash, which was later identified as coming from the eruption of Mount Mazama approximately 7,600 years before present. Creston believed that the sandals were ancient, but because radiocarbon dating would not be developed for another decade, his conviction would not be confirmed until 1951 when fibers from the sandals themselves were dated to more than 9,000 years old. And here are a pair of sandals, and they were found beneath a layer of volcanic ash. There's people around here that witnessed this event. Here are the caves, Fort Rock Caves, and these are wave-cut caves from an ancient lake. Here is a look at the Fort Rock Cave where people lived in the early Holocene. Here are some simple tools excavated from the cave. Once again, the sandals. Now here's a website. I will leave the link below from the University of Oregon, the world's oldest shoes says most dated Fort Rock style sandals are from Fort Rock Cave, but directly dated sandals of this type are also known from Cougar Mountain and Catlow Caves. Directly dated Fort Rock style sandals range in age from at least 10,500 years before present to 9,200 years before present based on radiocarbon dating. So they found quite a few of these sandals here. They look like they are pretty well made and they go back 10,500 years. So I'm really glad I made this video just for the fact that I found this article through researching that anomaly on Google Earth, whatever it is. And to this moment, I still am not sure what that is. But the people that wore these sandals witnessed the explosion of a 12,000 foot mountain that formed Crater Lake. What is their legend? They say this is the result of a war of the sky god and the god of the underworld. And when Crater Lake went off, this was a major catastrophic event that buried much of this whole area in debris. So this, whatever this was, 
this area got filled up with volcanic debris and there's still volcanic rock here today and there was ash burying some remnants of people that were living here and I showed you Fort Rock caves and these little features here really caught my attention and this one is larger than the meteor crater in Arizona but that appears to be volcanic in origin and I showed you the one pick of Fort Rock Caves and the one Mar Crater out in the distance that was formed, I guess, in the middle of a lake or what once was a lake. And here is what they call Fort Rock here. And we'll go down and take a peek at this on Google Street View. This isn't very clear, but here is a large Mar Crater out in the middle of an ancient lake and the guess on that crater is it is 50,000 approximately 50,000 years old but this whole region I thought was pretty fascinating but one comment got me to look into this and I found a pretty fascinating story in this region and sandals that go back 10,500 years well that's very interesting but as far as official impact sites this is not on any list it's not even a suspected crater but it's not listed as a volcanic caldera either. So the questions just keep on mounting here. Now for anything to be a fresh current impact from maybe 12,000 years ago, I would expect the landscape to still be devastated today. It would have set, out, set off catastrophic chain events in the area. Well, we have cracks in the earth and mar craters possibly going off at the beginning of the Holocene here. The window has dated those, some of them. So this just raises a bunch of questions. Have we totally missed something here? Well, the impact crater business I have learned over the past three weeks is not really a quickly evolving science. I'll just say that, but could that be an impact that happened maybe 12,000, 13,000 years ago. I just cannot rule that out. I thought I'd be able to, but I just can't. But man, I don't know. This is one of those mysteries that I enjoyed looking into. I don't have any firm answers, and I'm sure I will see comments and you people will look into it. Maybe some topographical maps, something else that you people might find that might bring some more light on the situation, but I have looked into it. As long as I've wanted to, I needed to make this video because this was really bugging me. Hope you thought that was cool, and you all have a very nice day.